Hello, my name is Simon Primus and I am an assistant professor of political science at the Friedrich Alexander University of Nuremberg Erlangen in Germany. For several years I have been working on voting behavior in Africa's transitional democracies. And in this video I discuss voting patterns in Sierra Leone, particularly in light of the highly contentious recent presidential election. First, a quick breakup of the events. Sierra Leone is a West African country with a population of roughly 9 million and has written a remarkable democratization success story. Despite grappling with one of the lowest per capita incomes globally, the country has been a highly competitive democracy for two decades and experienced two peaceful turnovers of power. On the 24th of June 2023, Sierra Leone held its general elections. After two days of counting, the Electoral Commission announced the re-election of incumbent President Julius Madabio, securing 56% of the national vote. His victory was just above the crucial 55% threshold required to avoid a runoff against opposition candidate Kamara. As often in transitional democracies, the winner is celebrating and the loser is crying foul. However, in this particular case, both national and international observers have raised significant concerns about the official result, pointing to logistical problems, statistical inconsistencies and a notable lack of transparency in the tabulation of results. Many experts, including the Rion political scientist and author of How to Rig an Election, Nick Cheesman, suggest the election was rigged. The most compelling evidence comes from the parallel vote tabulation conducted by the civil society coalition New Sierra Leone. In the past three elections, their PVT has accurately predicted the official outcome. However, this year several inconsistencies have emerged. Most notably, the vote shares of the main candidates significantly deviate from the projected results. Incumbent Julius Madabio's official vote share is 5.8% higher than in the parallel vote tabulation, while opposition leader Samura Kamara is down by 5.3%. Importantly, both deviations exceed the margin of error defined by the PVT. The inconsistencies clearly indicate that the vote was rigged to lift President Bio over the 55% threshold for a first round victory. While the parallel vote tabulation stands as strong technical evidence, it is also insightful to inquire the plausibility of the results. When we investigate the voting behavior of Sierra Leoneans, we find certain patterns that render it highly unlikely that President Bio secured such a clear victory. And this is what I want to illustrate to you now. Two significant aspects of voting patterns in Sierra Leone speak against the clear victory of the incumbent. Firstly, both major party candidates draw substantial support from large and loyal ethnic coalitions, which should guarantee a highly competitive race even granting the opposition a small advantage. Secondly, we observe a strong tendency of performance voting among minor ethnic groups. Accordingly, the recent economic challenges should have decreased electoral support for the government. To illustrate these points, I rely on data from the Afrobarometer Round 8 survey, which provides a representative sample of Sierra Leone's voting population. It is essential to note that the data was collected in 2020 during the middle of the presidential term. It does not reflect the political mood immediately before the election, Nevertheless, this data enables us to examine the broader voting dynamics in Sierra Leone. Let's begin by investigating ethnic voting patterns. The bar chart on the left depicts the percentage of incumbent voters in each ethnic group. Notably, Sierra Leone's two largest groups, the Temne and the Mende, exhibit the highest and lowest vote shares respectively. In the 2020 survey, only 10% of Temne voters said they wanted to vote for President Bio, whereas 95% of Mende favored him. This stark contrast underscores the exceptional politicization of ethnicity in Sierra Leonean politics. Beyond Mende and Temne, several other ethnic groups show clear preferences for one of the two major parties. On the right, the second chart summarizes the population share of the different ethnic groups based on their political leanings, providing a comparison of each candidate's ethnic support coalition. It shows that both major parties can rely on the support of significant portions of the population. In fact, the challenger Kamara's APC even has a slightly larger ethnic support coalition than President Bio's SLPP. 
This configuration should typically lead to a closely contested race, making it challenging for either candidate to secure the necessary 55% for a first round victory. But elections in Sierra Leone are not only about ethnicity. Performance also matters. A certain portion of the electorate clearly conditioned their vote choice on how the government has handled crucial responsibilities, such as keeping prices stable and addressing needs in the education system. To investigate performance voting, I conducted a logistic regression analysis using the Afrobarometer sample. The model statistically estimates the influence of ethnicity and performance perceptions on individual vote choice. The results are presented here in the form of predicted probabilities. The y-axis represents the likelihood of voting for incumbent President Bio. The x-axis corresponds to performance ratings. The performance indicator uses the question how well or badly would you say the current government is handling the following matters. And it counts from 0 to 4 the number of positive ratings in four crucial areas of governmental responsibility. Job creation, price stability, health and education. The lines depicted in the plots represent the six largest ethnic groups in Sierra Leone. On the left we see several groups that show no responsiveness to performance. The plot underlines the significance of ethnic voting among Mende and Temne, represented by the purple and yellow lines. Regardless of performance ratings, the Mende consistently display a likelihood of more than 90% to vote for President Bio. Conversely, the Temner hardly consider the incumbent even if they express satisfaction with his performance in office. Although the point estimates increase with more positive performance ratings, the widening confidence intervals indicate no significant difference between Temner individuals who rate the government favorably and those who perceive all issues as poorly managed. Descriptive statistics highlight the ethnic loyalty among the Mende. This bar chart compares the voting intentions of group members by their evaluation of inflation management. Out of 322 Mende respondents, a significant majority of 287 explicitly said the government has managed price stability poorly. But only 13 indicated an intention to vote for the opposition. The waste majority remain steadfast in their loyalty to President Bio, despite perceiving his handling of inflation as bad. So where does performance voting come into play? Well, not all ethnic groups in Sierra Leone ignore performance. On the right side, we see the predictions for several minor groups that clearly vote based on issues. This is particularly evident among the Kuranko and Fuller ethnic groups, represented by the black and red lines respectively. In both cases, the probability of voting for the incumbent candidate rises sharply with more positive performance perceptions. This is a clear indication that these constituencies will switch between parties and candidates depending on the achievements of the ruling government. The Fuller and Kuranko groups collectively account for approximately 8% of the electorate. However, it is likely that the performance voting population is larger and includes other small ethnic groups as well as some voters from groups with partisan leanings such as the Limba, who are represented here by the cyan-colored line and for whom we also see a weak but significant performance effect. So we certainly have a relevant number of voters in Sierra Leone who vote based on performance. And this group may strongly influence election outcomes, especially if we keep in mind the relatively equal size of opposing ethnic coalitions. And the performance factor makes the clear victory of incumbent President Bio in the 2023 election seem very suspicious. The reason being that there was a dramatic economic crisis in Sierra Leone since 2022 and analysts and politicians unanimously expected that the cost of living struggle would be the overarching issue in the election, as reported here by the fabulous magazine The Continent. It is also worth highlighting that more than 90% of citizens were dissatisfied with the government's ability to maintain price stability according to the 2022 Afrobarometer survey. And there's little indication that things got better. The currency, for instance, continued to depreciate in 2023. Consequently, one would have expected the government to lose some support in response to the economic crisis and the widely held perception that it failed to effectively handle the situation. So let us conclude. How credible is the official result which puts President Bio 15% ahead of his challenger Samura Kamara, just above the threshold to avoid a runoff? The analysis of voting patterns presented in this video reinforce the doubts expressed by observers. 
We have seen that several ethnic groups in Sierra Leone display strong political leanings, with the opposition enjoying a larger support coalition in terms of population share. This alone should make it challenging for the incumbent to reach the required 55% threshold. In addition, I have demonstrated that a significant proportion of Sierra Leoneans, at least 1 in 10, vote based on performance. Accordingly, the cost of living crisis should have reduced the vote share of the incumbent candidate. Beyond potential rigging, are there other explanations for the incumbent's clear victory? Well, turnout imbalances between opposition and government strongholds could be a contributing factor, with intimidation in opposition areas and patronage in government strongholds often influencing turnout in low-income democracies. Assessing this factor is challenging, as official turnout statistics seem to be faulty. However, considering the strong enthusiasm for democracy in Sierra Leone documented in many Afrobarometer publications, it seems unlikely that opposition supporters abstain significantly. It is also noteworthy that the government received positive ratings for its educational policies, including the abolition of school fees. However, given the magnitude of the economic crisis, it seems unlikely that education would have tipped the scale for many performance voters. In summary, the significant margin of victory appears very suspicious in light of general voting patterns observed in Sierra Leone. To be clear, the key piece of evidence remains the deviation of the parallel vote tabulation from the official result. My analysis contributes additional circumstantial evidence to the discussion and I hope you found it insightful. Finally, I would like to share some of my favorite writings for those interested in delving deeper into the topics of democracy and voting behavior in Africa. Thanks for watching and goodbye.